Hello Wastrels, Kato Genesis here, and welcome to a mega guide for Fallout 4's books and magazines that you can collect throughout the game. There's a grand total of 132 magazines. I did individual guides on each of the sets, but this combines all of them. So if you're looking for a particular set of magazines, the timestamps will be here on screen and down below in the description. If the magazines grant a cumulative perk, like the Guns and Bullets magazines, that bonus will be shown at the beginning of the segment, but if each magazine in a set has unique effects, like Astoundingly Awesome Tales, those will be shared as each magazine is shown. Time to get started. The first of these is Red Menace, and can be retrieved shortly after the beginning of Fallout 4. While in the process of leaving the vault, just down the hall from the reactors is the rec room. If you access the recreation terminal, you will see that there is a holotape already in it called Red Menace. At this point, you can give it a try or simply eject it for your own collection. Either way, it's on like Red Menace. The following holotape games are easier to spot because they're included with a Robco Fun magazine. Speaking of, our next holotape game is Atomic Command. It is found in the Museum of Freedom in Concord. You will find this Robco Fun magazine on a desk in the room that Preston Garvey and the remaining settlers were holed up in. This one lets you defend the pre-war cities from certain atomic annihilation. Third to add to our collection is in Diamond City in the Valentine Detective Agency. As soon as you enter, the Robco Fun magazine is on a desk towards the back. This one comes with Zeta Invaders. In case you wanted to double down on apocalypse scenarios, Zeta Invaders has you protect the Earth from alien incursion. As long as you have taken part in the main quest, long enough to enlist the help of a certain detective and your dog, you will be led to Fort Hagen. After things escalate, and then resolve, in the command center this Robco Fun magazine is next to the terminal that the quest points you to. If prior to this explosives were used, the magazine may have been knocked off the desk. This issue of Robco Fun includes Pipfall, in which you must avoid dangerous trials, traps, and enemies to collect all of the bobbleheads. That sounds awfully familiar. The fifth and last one to collect is in Good Neighbor, inside of the Memory Den. If you enter and go down the stairs in the back to the lab, on a desk to your left will be this last issue of Robco Fun. This one includes the classic role-playing game, Grognak and the Ruby Ruins. In this one, of course you take on the role of Grognak the Barbarian. Find some recruits at the local tavern and go off on your adventure. Due to the amount of time required for Grognak and the Ruby Ruins, if you stop the game on your Pip-Boy for any reason, you will be able to continue where you left off next time you play. The first and closest one, Self-Defense Secrets, is in the Ranger Cabin, a short distance south of Vault 111. Once collected, you will take 5% less damage from incoming melee attacks. Not far from the Ranger Cabin, the second Wasteland Survival Guide book, dubbed The Guide to Diamond City, is in the Gorski Cabin, or more specifically, the Gorski Cabin Bunker. This cabin is slightly south of Concord, and a hatch inside will lead you into the bunker. Towards the back on the desk with the terminal is the guide to Diamond City, and once placed in your inventory will permanently mark Diamond City on your map. Understandably, a survival guide best to get early. The next one, called Hunting in the Wastes, is located in the Sunshine Tidings Co-op, a potential settlement further south of the Sanctuary Hills area. There are ramshackle houses all around, but this wasteland survival guide is next to the one to the right of the silos. It should be right next to the red trunk, and when this one is acquired, for the hunter in all of us, this will permanently let you pick up additional meat from creatures. And how can one complain with extra deathclaw steak? Fourth is the Scrapyard Home Decorations Guide. This one is in Lynn Woods, recognizable thanks to its Stone Guard Tower, and west of Parsons State Insane Asylum. You'll find this Wasteland Survival Guide inside the cluster of shacks on a sleeping bag. Be careful though, there is a reason this place is unusually quiet when you arrive. While not even practical, picking up this Wasteland Survival Guide unlocks flamingo decorations for your settlements. Water Aerobics for Ghouls is next, and is found in the Old Gullet Sinkhole on the northern edge of the Malden Township. If you jump down into the sinkhole, you will find yourself inside of a cave with a small camp, and this book will be on the cooking station in there. Quite a bit more useful than the previous, Water Aerobics for Ghouls permanently increases your swim speed by 25%. Invaluable when getting in and out of the water quickly. 
The sixth Wasteland Survival Guide is the Insect Repellent Special. You can find this one in Crater House. It is just south of the Salem Township, is highly irradiated, and because of this, occupied by the Children of Adam. The Insect Repellent Special is found on a table that has a lit lantern on it underneath one of these elevated shacks, and permanently reduces the damage you receive from insects by 5%. The next is in the Nahant Oceanological Society, called the Commonwealth Coupon Spectacular. The Oceanological Society is east of Libertalia. Inside the main building, towards the back, you will find this issue of the Wasteland Survival Guide on a desk. Once found and picked up, the Commonwealth Coupon Spectacular yields a permanent 10% discount for you when purchasing from food or drink vendors, translating to spending 10% more time at the bar. Eighth on this list is the bright side of radiation poisoning, and can be found in Egret Tours Marina, a potential settlement west of West Roxbury Township. There is a small diner at the very end of the pier, and on the counter next to the cash register is the bright side of radiation poisoning. When gathered, this increases the effects when it comes to healing from packaged food and drink that is irradiated by 50%, including, but not limited to, Nuka-Cola products. The ninth and final Wasteland Survival Guide in this list, called Farming the Wastes, is found within the wreck of the USS Riptide, a tug that is permanently moored with a bridge in the channel north of Diamond City. This one is found inside the ship's cabin, and once you've collected it, it permanently increases healing effects from fruits and vegetables grown in the wasteland by 50%. In other words, another way to heal more. First and closest to Sanctuary is Sinister Seafood Strikes. This is found on the settlement workbench of Outpost Zimonja. This outpost lies on the northern edge of the map, northeast of Ten Pines Bluff. Once picked up, this will increase your damage output at night by 5%. Following a similar theme is Attack of the Fishmen. It is located in Skylanes Flight 1981, south of Outpost Simonja mentioned previously. It is in the restroom below the cockpit, and once acquired it will increase the damage you deal to Mirelurk variants by 5%. Third is My Brain and I, a twisted love tale, found in the Boston Mayoral Shelter. This shelter is just to the southwest of Fort Hagen. After finding your way inside, once you gain access to the mayor's room which has the trunk in it, My Brain and I will be on the nightstand. This grants the incredibly useful bonus of regenerating one health per minute. So instead of resting in a bed when injured, after getting this you can instead sit in a chair and use the weight function to regenerate lost health. Fourth is Attack of the Metal Men. This is found deep within the Dunwich Borer's Quarry, which is southwest of Salem and the Museum of Witchcraft. When you make it into the mines, look for the dimly lit main shaft and drop down either in power armor or by taking the stairs. In this magazine is found on top of the weapons workbench. Picking up Attack of the Metal Men will reduce the damage you receive from robots by 5%. Dunwich Borer's is home to several other collectibles, including weapon and bobblehead, so keep your eyes peeled down here. Rise of the Radiated is fourth, and is found in the East Boston Preparatory School. The school itself is north of the Boston Airport. Make it inside the school and on the upper floor, in a computer lab towards the front of the building. This magazine will be sitting by one of the broken terminals. When collected, this will increase the radiation removal effect of Rataway by 5%. This magazine could have been called the Recovery of the Radiated, or Retreat, or Reduction. The sixth, called Curse of the Burned, is found in the Crater of Adam. Follow the glow of the glowing sea in the southwest to this main crater of the Children of Adam. You may be surprised to find that it is inhabited, and the Curse of the Burned is found in Mother Isolde's shack upstairs on a stand. When acquired, this will increase the damage you deal to ghouls by 5%. Also, if the main quest has not led you here yet, the inhabitants here may be hostile, so extra radiation supplies are recommended. Giant Insects Invade continues the theme of radiation by effect and location. While you are still in the glowing sea, southeast of the crater is the Sentinel site. Get inside the silo's main chamber, and the first room you find after you start taking the stairs down will hold the magazine in front of some monitoring equipment. Picking up Giant Insects Invade will give you a permanent 5% boost to your radiation resistance. And don't worry about those alarms when you first arrive. I'm sure nothing will explode. Northeast of the Glowing Sea area, you can find the Starlit Sniper. This issue can be found in the Coast Guard Pier, northwest of the West Roxbury Township. The Starlit Sniper is sitting on a toilet tank in one of the jail cells, and after it is acquired, it will increase the damage dealt with scoped weapons by 5%. Snipers, this one's for you. 
If you have not gotten to the turning point of the story of Fallout 4, the next magazine, Have Dog Will Travel, is in a location that I wouldn't want to be spoiled. Since it has never been my intention to spoil anything for you, you can pause the video and use the timestamp in the description below to skip ahead to Rise of the Mutants. You have been warned. Next, of course, is Have Dog Will Travel, located within the Institute. This is on the outside balcony of Dr. Holdren's quarters on the north side of the atrium. And of course, the Institute is not accessible until you gain access through the main story. Have Dog Will Travel gives a substantial boost to dog meat specifically, reducing the damage he will take by 10%. Be sure to get this the first chance you have, unless of course you are siding with the Institute. The 10th issue of Astoundingly Awesome Tales we find is Rise of the Mutants. This is in Trinity Church of the Trinity Plaza, off the northwestern corner of Trinity Tower. Past all the broken floorboards and pews, this magazine rests on top of the podium. And when you retrieve this one, it increases the damage you deal to super mutants by 5% permanently. The surrounding area has no shortage of super mutants, and because of that is a great place to test the effect. The next astoundingly awesome tale is Invasion of the Zetans, found in Hubris Comics, just northeast of Trinity Plaza. This is on the top floor of the comic shop, inside the restroom turned dressing room for the Silver Shroud actors. Once you pick this up, the damage you deal with the alien blaster will be increased by 5%. Like Dunwich Boars, keep an eye out for other collectibles in here, as there are several. Twelfth is the Mad Russian's Revenge, found in the underground of Pikmin Gallery, located just west of the Old North Church. When in the gallery, if you find the underground passage, in the final chamber will be Pikmin himself, a bobblehead, and this magazine. The Mad Russian's Revenge will give you a 5% boost to your poison resistance, letting you survive just a little bit longer against Stingwings, Rad Scorpions, and other various poisonous creatures. Just about there, 13th is a Gorilla 8 My Patrol car. This is in the headquarters section underneath the Old North Church, on a desk that is facing the Power Armor Station. Another that affects a particular weapon. Picking this up will increase the damage you deal with the Cryolator by 5%. To make your enemies chill out faster, we'll go with that. The final issue of Astoundingly Awesome Tales to collect is The Man Who Could Stop Time. This is found in Vault 114 of the Park Street Station, in the Boston Common area near Swan's Pond. Save the quote-unquote damsel in distress within Vault 114 and on your way out, on one of the Vault Tech Crate Barricades, is this magazine. The Man Who Could Stop Time raises your maximum action points by 5, the stop time thing being a little bit of a vats joke, but not so much anymore. first is called Why I Sold My Mother, and this is found at Walden Pond, inside of the sewers nearby. Walden Pond can be found west of Lexington. When you make it inside, you'll hear banter between two raiders, if they're still alive. And this jerky vendor magazine is found on one of the barrels, lit by a lantern. So selling our own mothers is lucrative? We may never know the secret. Tales of a Junktown Jerky Vendor number 2, called Take Your Business on the Road, is found at the Mystic Pines Retirement Home, just slightly northeast of Lexington this time. Next to the television inside, this magazine lies on top of the table stand, close to the main entrance. The Art of Haggling is third, and is found inside of Super Duper Mart, a location actually within Lexington. Get inside this grocery store, and head towards the back to the service window of the pharmacy. Next to it is a magazine rack, and on it sits this issue of Tales of a Junktown Jerky Vendor. Fourth to collect is Benefits of Child Labor, which is found in Longneck Lukowski's Cannery a factory that is south of Salem. Inside there is an office that hangs above the conveyors. Get into this office and next to the terminal is this magazine, as well as a bobblehead. It may show the benefits of child labor, but what are the drawbacks? Fifth for us to gather is how to run a successful vendor stand. This one is found in a junkyard known as Big John's Salvage, which is northeast of the West Roxbury Township. There is what looks like a teetering caravan on top of one of the containers. This magazine is inside of it on a small table. Next up is Suit Up and Succeed, found in the wreck of the FMS Northern Star. This permanently grounded ship is the southeasternmost main location on the map. When you make it there and find your way up to the deck, about midway towards the cabin there will be a table with a parasol on it. On this table sits the magazine. Seventh is called Capitalism and You, found at the Four Leaf Fish Packing Plant. 
northwest of the castle. There is a locker room located on the bottom floor of this plant, and nearby the red trunk in here, Capitalism and You lies on the locker room bench. Eighth and last to find of these jerky bender tales is called the Joy of Wealth, and it's found in the Gwinnett Brewery just south of the aforementioned fish packing plant. Being this brewery has seen better days on the inside, you will need to climb the pipes and catwalks to get to this upper office. When you do, the magazine is sitting on the desk. First is lasers and hunting, acceptable overkill. This is found on the top floor of Fort Hagen, and while a large portion of this area is quest locked, all the upper floors should be accessible still. There is a roof access in Fort Hagen that gives a direct route to the third floor. A short distance from the roof access is a small lounge, and the magazine is in here on the table. Second is Void Those Pesky Gun Laws. This is in the basement of the Rook family house in Salem. When you arrive, a miscellaneous quest should activate, with Barney Rook requesting help with some local Meyer lurks. After you do, you are invited into the basement, where this issue of Guns and Bullets is sitting on a desk. Third in our search is Take Aim Army Style. It is within the South Boston Military Checkpoint. This checkpoint is west of the castle and northeast of West Roxbury. The magazine is on a desk against the wall, closest to the windows viewing the truck outside. Next up is Street Guns of Detroit, found in the Gunner's Plaza just south of West Roxbury. In the largest room of the plaza, find your way upstairs and in one of the offices is a chessboard, some bottle caps, and the magazine. Detroit had pipe weapons? Who knew? Our halfway point is the Moon, communist doomsday device. This one is found in Quincy, a very large gunner outpost. The magazine is on top of the overpass on the outskirts of Quincy, and after you find your way up, it is in the large shack composed of two semi-trucks. Sixth is bear-proofing your campsite. This is found in the Cambridge Police Station, but only after the Brotherhood has made its presence known and sent reinforcements to the police station itself, most easily noticeable by the increase in guards and refurbishing on the inside. There is an office to the left of the entrance with a safe in it. Unlock this safe and the Guns and Bullets magazine is within, but again only after the reinforcements of the Brotherhood arrive. Little Guns for Little Ladies is next, found in Fraternal Post 115 south of the Cambridge Police Station. In the Fraternal Post, there will be a large press room, and this magazine is located on the podium. Contrary to this magazine, little ladies don't always need little guns. The guide for hunting commies is in the Ticonderoga safe house. This location is revealed to you after you join the railroad and take part in a quest called Boston After Dark. After that, you get full access to Ticonderoga safe house, and this magazine is sitting on a desk in one of the top floor offices. Sure to have useful information, even if commies aren't the thing you're hunting. Speaking of hunting, the next is The Future of Hunting, found in the Bureau of Alcohol, Drugs, Tobacco, Firearms, and Lasers, also known as BADTFL Regional Office, northwest of the Bunker Hill Memorial. The magazine in here is found in the Chief's office, in front of a lamp on top of the desk. So does a Mr. Handy make a good hunting partner? The tenth and final issue of this magazine to collect is called Plasma, the Weapon of Tomorrow. This can be picked up at the castle, right by the central radio tower. And as stated at the beginning, even though it's blatantly displaying energy weaponry, this Guns and Bullets magazine will only affect guns with bullets. First to find is ER Nurses Confess All, which is in the Medford Memorial Hospital in the Malden Township. This is directly north of the Bunker Hill Monument. When you find your way into this hospital, there is a locked file and storage room, and this surgical journal is lying on the desk. The second surgical journal is called Raised by Robots, and is found in the MedTech Research Facility. Pretty much on the other side of the Malden Township, some of the MedTech Research Facility can be explored, but to access where the magazine is located, you will need to have McCready as a companion long enough for him to share the quest Long Road Ahead with you. McCready can be found in the third rail of Good Neighbor, and after he gives you this task, he will also give you the password for the lower levels. The surgical journal actually sits in the same room as the quest objective, so you won't need to go too far out of your way to find find it. The third we go to collect is cryotechnology, 
Haven or Tomb. This is in the Greater Mass Blood Clinic that is just south of Fort Hagen. There is an office in the upper floor of the clinic, and the password to unlock it is somewhere in the lower floors. Find that and get into this office, and the surgical journal is sitting right on top of the desk. Being this is a blood clinic, it is an excellent place to find blood packs. Vance would be jealous. Next up is the Happy Sedation Special. I really wish we could read these. This surgical journal is in the Sandy Cove's convalescent home in Salem. Just off to the side of the front desk when you enter is several safes and a security door. Unlock the security door from the novice reception terminal, and behind the security door on the shelves is the Happy Sedation Special and a syringer. <laughs> to happily sedate patients from long range, perhaps? Fifth of these magazines to find is Scars Are Cool. This is in the Cambridge Polymer Lab south of College Square, near the police station where you meet some certain Brotherhood members. Cambridge Polymer Labs has a quest on site that must be completed before you have access to this magazine which is in the director's office. Speak to what seems to be the only one still attending the Polymer Labs and the quest will begin and good luck. After which you can find a way to unlock the director's office and the magazine will be on the desk. Sixth is titled, Pay Now, Get Better Later, which is in Green Tech Genetics, east of the Cambridge Polymer Labs mentioned previously, and southwest of the Bunker Hill Memorial. It will stand out as the building is green, and after making it inside on the northern end of the building, there is a spacious hallway room, and after you find two red couches, this surgical journal is in between them on a table. The seventh surgical journal is called Finding Your Funny Bone, and it is found within the Boston Public Library northeast of Diamond City. There are two points of access here, of course the front door, but if you access a library from the underground and pass a speech check at the intercom, the library's defenses will be friendly towards you. The magazine is found in one of the book return terminals near the front door. Turn in enough overdue books to receive 50 tokens, and you will have enough to trade for Finding Your Funny Bone. Be on the lookout for a bobblehead here as well. Eighth, called Let's Play Doctor, is in the Parsons State Insane Asylum, a location that is quest locked until you become an employee of Jack Cabot. To start this quest line, you can go to Bunker Hill, and after you find a ghoul mercenary by the name of Edward Deegan, he will direct you to Cabot House and the beginnings of this family's well kept secret. Follow this quest line up to the Parsons State Insane Asylum, and within the heavily fortified cell on the lowest basement floor, the magazine sits on a small table. For the ninth and last Massachusetts Surgical Journal, called Better Living Through Chems, if you have retrieved the last one, you've already been in the location of this one. It is in one of the upstairs rooms of Cabot House, laying on a wooden desk next to a note, that reveals a little bit more information on the Cabot family. We begin with the Secretary Charmer. This is found in Fiddler's Green Trailer Estates, to the east of the Fort Hagen area. The Secretary Charmer is inside the trailer with a motorcycle out front. When picked up, it will give you an extra 25% experience when persuading women in dialogue. Best to get early when charming the ladies often. The second issue of Live and Love we are looking for is Talk Yourself Sober. This one is found at Revere Beach Station, northwest of Libertalia, on the eastern coastline naturally. Next to the station entrance there is a building with several arcade games, and on the top floor it is sitting on the cooking station. This will grant you plus one luck when you are drinking alcoholic beverages in the company of your companions. Next is Trim the Fat, which is found in the WRVR broadcast station. This is east of the Natick Township and past the Electrical Hobbyists Club. Just outside the recording booth in the broadcast station, on a desk you will find this magazine, and it will grant your companions an extra 10 units of carry weight, and as you should know by now, any bonus to carrying capacity is nice. The fourth Live and Love magazine we are looking for is Nuke the Man. This one is inside the College Square station. This is not far from the Cambridge Police Station, where you can first meet Paladin Dance. But inside the College Square station, and behind the ticket counter on top of a safe, is this propagandastic magazine. When collected, this will increase your companion's damage output by 5%. Fifth is Beware the Manhandler the opposite of the Secretary Charmer. This is found all the way up the stairs of the Bunker Hill Monument. It is on the table in this convenient lookout post. Taking this one will increase experience gained by 25% after successfully persuading males in the Commonwealth. This next one is called I Married a Robot, and is found in the Diamond City Schoolhouse behind Fallon's basement. As soon as you enter, you'll see the living quarters underneath the schoolhouse itself. On a cinder block next to one of the beds is the magazine. 
This will increase the damage for your robotic companions by 5%. We're just about there. Seventh is Lifelong Best Friends. This one is in Faneuil Hall, northeast of Good Neighbor. After taking the last flight of stairs up in this mutant-infested point of interest, at the top of the stairs to your right is a couch with a stand next to it. The magazine should be sitting on the stand. After picking it up, this issue of Live and Love will increase your companion's maximum health by 10. The last two issues of Live and Love are both located in Good Neighbor. The first, called Advice from Married Men, is inside of the third rail. Before going downstairs, take a right and you'll be in the restroom. On the toilet tank in the furthest stall is where you'll find this magazine. Once it is yours, your companions will gain a plus 5 to their damage and energy resistances. Now for the ninth and last one, we don't have to travel far, we go for an experience to remember. After you enter the Hotel Rexford, on your right will be the bar, if you can really call it that. Go behind it and you'll find this magazine sitting on its surface, just waiting to finish your collection. This one gives you survivors a plus 5% experience bonus for all experience gained when you are traveling with a companion. First up is Jungle of the Bat Babies. It is likely the first Grognak comic you will see, as it's found in your player character's home pre-war and post-war, on top of the kitchen counter. The second comic is Blood on the Harp, and can be located in the Wicked Shipping Fleet lockup, directly south of Sanctuary Hills. There's a small office off to the side of the main building. It is sitting on the desk inside next to the key and terminal. The third Grognak the Barbarian comic is called Demon Slaves Demon Sands, and this is the one that there are two prints of. One is found in Vault 81, the other in Vault 75. If you choose to make nice with the dwellers of Vault 81, you can get a miscellaneous quest called Short Stories, which has you tell a story to the students in Katie's classroom. The comic book is a reward for telling the story. As for Vault 75, which is underneath the ruins of Malden Middle School, though it may sound easier said than done, you need only find your way to the overseer's office in which the comic book is found on the bed. Remember, while you may get the Barbarian perk bonus, it still will not go above 10 ranks. Fourth to find is In the Bosom of the Corsair Queen. Not in the book. That's the title. This is found inside of the Corvega Assembly Plant on the southern side of Lexington. This comic book is on the top floor of the assembly plant, where cars were actually being assembled, and the leader of these raiders usually resides. It is on the desk by the terminal. The fifth Grognak comic is called Fatherless Kerr. It is found in the Mass Pike Interchange southeast of Fort Hagen. Once you get up to this highway turned gunner camp, there's a small shack by itself, and sitting on the toilet in here is the Grognak comic you are seeking. You might want to wash your hands after you pick it up, though. Next to collect is What Sorcery This, discovered in the Museum of Witchcraft, south of the Salem Township. Get inside from the basement, and when you reach the ground floor, it sits on a well-lit table. How appropriate to find this in the Museum of Witchcraft. Seventh is in the layer of the Virgin Eater. Again, that's just the title. The layer this comic book actually resides is Hyde Park, a little town that has been flooded southeast of the West Roxbury Township. Get up to the throne of sorts, and behind the chair is a safe, and on top of the safe is the comic book. The next is Lost in the Snows of Lust. However, you can find your copy in Backstreet Apparel a multi-floored clothing warehouse northeast of Diamond City. Find the living room area with beer bottles all around, and this Grognak comic lies on the table. The ninth Grognak comic is Enter Mala, War Maiden of Mars. It is in the bandstand of the Boston Common, not far from Swan's Pond. It is next to some radioactive barrels, so it's recommended to use Radex before picking up this comic book. The tenth and final issue to collect of Grognak the Barbarian is The Trickster Cometh, or Cometh the Trickster. It has an odd title layout. This is found in an unmarked secondary location called Bus and Apartment Wreckage. It's basically where a bus drove off the freeway into an apartment. This is just north of Andrews Station, and northwest of the castle. The comic book is in the apartment itself, waiting to be collected upon the mattress. We begin with the Flame Job paint scheme. You can find this magazine at the Robotics Disposal Ground, just to the northeast of Sanctuary Hills. This magazine is found in the only building here, and once you locate and pick up this magazine, you will get a nice red Flame Job for your power armor. It might make you an easier target, but this is for style over functionality. 
Second to find is the shark paint schemes, the magazine for which is found at the Adam Katz garage, found south-southwest of the castle. There is a caravan out back of the garage, and shark paint schemes is sitting on the nightstand in here. Painting your power armor with this one will make it green with red accents, and some shark teeth and eyes on the chest plate and shoulders. If the power armor itself didn't have enough terrifying presence, this will certainly add to it. The third and last Hot Rodder magazine is called Hot Pink. This one is found in West Roxbury in an unmarked location called the Parking Lot Funhouse, which is the parking structure between Milton General Hospital and Fallon's Department Store. After you start from the bottom and navigate the maze up to the top, there is a small abode in the top floor, and it is in here on top of a crate next to the bed. The Hot Pink Hot Rodder magazine does what else but make your power armor hot pink, with a couple of white accents along with it. If the flame job made you an easy target, Hot Pink will increase it by at least tenfold. But there's no rules on practicality in the wasteland. The first is called Megaton Hair, and as stated in the West Roxbury Township Scavenger Squad Guide, this is in Fallon's department store of West Roxbury, in the clothing store office not far from the roof access. This will make the explosive Megaton hairstyle available to you after grabbing this and finding a barbershop. The second issue is called the Hornet's Nest, another gaudy hairstyle, but this one is found in an unmarked location called Charlestown Laundry, a small laundromat southeast of the Bunker Hill Monument. After acquiring this issue of the LaCroix magazine, you will gain access to the Hornet's Nest hairstyle also when you find a Wasteland Barber. We now move into the Taboo Tattoos magazines, first of which is called Eagle's Nest. This is found in the Concord Civic Access of Concord. This is the underground portion of this township that was covered in Scavenger Squad number 7. And after you get down here, find the Meyer Lurk, and there's a little camp set up in a room nearby, and this issue of Taboo Tattoos is right next to the trunk. After Eagle's Nest is picked up, the next time you see a Wasteland Doctor who can perform reconstructive surgery, the Eagle Neck Tattoo will be available as well. Next Taboo Tattoos magazine is called Issue Number 2, and displays a nautical anchor. This is located in Thicket Excavations, just east of the Concord Township. The magazine sits in one of the campers that is closest to the path that goes down into the quarry. Once you retrieve Issue Number 2, you gain the chance to get a forehead tattoo of the nautical anchor symbol. The next Taboo Tattoos magazine is called Skulls Are Hip, and is found in the Irish Pride Industries shipyard. This is south of the Malden Township. After fighting your way inside, you will find a dry docked tugboat. Get in there, and this magazine is on the lower deck on a table. Acquiring Skulls Are Hip will give you the Radiation Skull Tattoo, which can go on your character's forehead, and I suppose that's one way to mark yourself as a hazard. The next Taboo Tattoos magazine portrays a burly sailor cringing as he gets some work done on his arm. Dubbed issue number 16, you will find this Taboo Tattoos magazine in Vault 81, a somewhat successful vault experiment that has all the dwellers alive and well to the west of Diamond City. This magazine is sitting on a table in the barber shop within the main atrium. Grabbing this magazine will give you the Bad Luck Horseshoe, another forehead tattoo, which could be appropriate if you have a low luck value. Last but not least is 13, in case you'd rather be lucky. This one is found inside of the Mass Pike Tunnel, but is easiest to obtain when you go to the Boston Police Rationing Site, marked with a railroad symbol directly south of Diamond City. Follow the little jumping puzzle into the warehouse, and towards the back of the bunker is both the magazine and the entrance to the Mass Pike Tunnel. As expected, picking up this issue of Taboo Tattoos will give you the Lucky Clover tattoo for your character's cheek. And being you could have multiple tattoos at once, you could have the Bad Luck Horseshoe and the Lucky Clover at the same time. The first Picket Fences is called Essential Upgrades, and is found in the Blast Furnace Room of the Saugus Ironworks, a factory to the east of Malden Township and to the southwest of Salem. Make your way past the forged raiders and make it to the Blast Furnace, and this will be sitting on one of the metal catwalks above the Blast Furnace itself. Picking up Essential Upgrades allows for statues to be placed at your settlements, letting you keep it classy regardless of where you settle. Second is called Welcome Home and is found in the Weston Water Treatment Plant, which is located east of Fort Hagen. The path from the elevator in here will lead to a small office overlooking the rest of the treatment plant, and it lies on the filing cabinet next to the desk. And when acquired, this will give access to patio furniture, composed of the parasol table and some chairs. The third picket fences is called the House of Tomorrow Today. And this one is found inside of Beantown Brewery, just northeast across the river from the water treatment plant 
and south of Grey Garden. Inside there's a foreman's office up high, and within is a green trunk and this issue of picket fences lying on the floor next to it. For the sake of being appropriate, upon acquisition this will unlock picket fences, for another means to corral your flora, fauna, and possibly settlers. The fourth picket fences is called Modern Hearth, and can be picked up at Hardware Town. This hardware store is just southwest of Diamond City, and after you get inside look for the office on the upper floor, and Modern Hearth is found on the desk. After obtaining this one, there will be numerous high-tech lamps and light fixtures to keep your settlements well lit, and looking slightly more civilized, even if it is just the lights. Fifth and last to collect is Modern Lawn Care. This issue of Picket Fences is found in the Combat Zone. Combat Zone is a pit fight arena that is south of the Boston Common, and southwest of Good Neighbor. This magazine lies on the table set for one nearest to the bar. When collected, Modern Lawn Care will give you various shrubs and less than alive potted plants to be placed anywhere on your settlement. It couldn't hurt to add a little more life, if not decoration. The first, called Will Robots Rule the World, is located in ArcJet Systems, southeast of the Sunshine Tidings Co-op and Federal Ration Stockpile. Inside of ArcJet Systems and past the turrets on the upper floor will be one of the executive offices with a trunk inside. There will also be a terminal and this magazine sitting right next to it. Second, called Blast Off to Adventure, is inside of Makra Fish Packing, which is north of Salem. When you make it inside, take the main elevator to the lower floors, and this magazine is on the northeastern corner, under the larger set of stairs, near the raider taking a nap. Third to collect is The Future of Warfare, which is discovered in Reeb Marina, east of the National Guard Training Yard and northwest of Libertalia. The magazine is in here sitting on the table of the dining area, not far from the red trunk. You'll also discover that someone was late to a party. Fourth is Rocket Science for Toddlers. This is inside of the Rocky Cave, in the southwesternmost corner of the Glowing Sea. A small, well-defended corridor will lead to a larger cave, and this magazine sits on the workbench next to the chemistry station. If this is your first visit, try not to steal all the junk items in here right off, because this cave's lone resident might not like it too much. The fifth issue of Tesla Science, called 10 Number 1 Hits, is found at Poseidon Energy, which is south of the Adam Katz Garage. While both sets of doors are locked when you arrive, you can still make your way in by the drain pipes on the southeast side. Find the elevated office with the highest density of raiders, and the magazine is on a desk in here next to the broken terminal. Be sure to get the bobblehead on that very same desk. Number 6 is called US Army Goes to Space, and is found inside of Hallucigen Inc., a place full of biowarfare experiments. This Tesla Science magazine is on the first floor in the weaponization research lab in the northeast corner of the building, right next to the prototype deterrent. Try not to breathe too deep when you're in here. Seventh is called Giant Super Weapon. This is found in the executive floors of the Mass Fusion Building, which is just north of Good Neighbor. The executive offices are in the upper area, separated by a glass plate. There are a couple of different ways you can get up here, one of which is just going through the main quest until you arrive at the Mass Fusion Building on the roof, or if you set up your power armor with a jetpack and get to the highest floor you can otherwise, there is a hole in the floor off to the side that you can boost yourself up through. However you proceed with this, the magazine is sitting on some equipment just past all the cubicles. Eighth is What is Plasma Anyway? This one is in the General Atomics Factory, northwest of the castle. To get this magazine, when you first enter, there will be a stairwell in the back. Take these stairs up and go past the Nuka-Cola machine, and inside a nearby office, the magazine lies on the desk. If only we could read these to find out more about plasma. The ninth and last Tesla Science magazine is Geckos and Gamma Radiation, the key to prolonged life. It is in University Point, southwest of the castle and northwest of the Adam Katz garage. This magazine is inside the main hall of University Point on the upper floor. Look for a small camp put together next to a chalkboard, and this is sitting on a small table next to a set of clothing. Why couldn't this magazine have a Jackson's Chameleon instead? We may never know.
First is called Control Turrets, and it is found in the Wildwood Cemetery. This graveyard is located northwest of Malden Township, and directly south of Outpost Simonja. There is a large tree dead center, and this magazine is found at the base of it. After picking up Control Turrets, the corresponding holotape can be utilized in the terminals that are attached to turrets, giving the user a few more options, including target scrambling, allying the turrets with the user, and or causing them to self-destruct. The second Total Hack magazine is called Control Robots and is located in Watts Consumer Electronics, southeast of Lexington and northeast of Cambridge. After entering the Consumer Electronics store, you'll notice a rather large hole in the floor. Taking this path down to the basement leads to a utility room. Find the terminal down here on a desk and right beside it is this magazine. Though the title is slightly misleading, you will get some more advanced options when using this holotape on Protectron terminals, which includes allying them with the user and a scramble targeting similar to the turrets. Third and last, following the same theme, is called Control Spotlights. This one is found in the Shamrock Tap House, which is southeast of Good Neighbor along the coast. After entering the tap house, look for a room in the back that is marked as a restricted area, with some lounge furniture and a table in the center on which stands a female mannequin. And in this mannequin's hand is the magazine. Finding a spotlight terminal and using this magazine's holotape will allow you to overwrite spotlights to detect hostiles, turn off detection completely, or cause them to self-destruct. Too bad there's no light show or strobe setting. First up is the Locksmith Certification Special. You can acquire this one at the Malden Center Station within the Malden Township. Once you come across the room where a battle has taken place or is currently taking place, the magazine is inside one of the orange train cars on the rails nearby. Next is Mysteries of the Master Key Exposed, found in the Poseidon Energy Turbine number 18F. This is south of the Malden Township past West Everett Estates, one of the places you can walk right in without a loading screen. Inside and down below, this tumbler today is on a shelf next to the trunk. Be sure to ready your weapon on your way out though. Third is Bobby Pins, more effective than lockpicks. This issue of tumblers today is in the Easy City Downs, north of the Boston Airport and west of Libertalia. The Raiders here cobbled together a bridge system that leads up to the announcer room. Once you find that, the magazine is yours for the taking. Next is something you should be familiar with by now, open any lock in 5 seconds flat. This magazine is found in West Roxbury Station of the West Roxbury Township. Make it down to the subway and cross over both tracks once, and take your immediate left down a utility hallway and inside a broken locker by candlelight is this magazine's location. The fifth and final Tumblr's Today magazine, called Confessions of a Housebreaker, is discovered within the Fenn Street Sewer just west of Diamond City. Look for the larger room with the set of stairs and power lines in the middle. Off to the side will be a small caged area, with the magazine, a holotape, a stealth boy, and some rat away on a desk next to a safe. The first one, Tiptoe Through the Tulips, is found in USAF Satellite Station Olivia. This is the first satellite station on your way east from Sanctuary. As soon as you enter, you'll find a room locked by a terminal. You can either hack the terminal or find the key to the door, but when you enter, on a table, this manual will be sitting right next to the mini nuke inside. The next manual is called Whistling in the Dark. This one is in Switchboard, which is underneath Slocum's Joe in Lexington. Switchboard is only accessible after you've found the railroad and started the quest Tradecraft. Once inside of Switchboard, look for the command room, and on the upper floor on a desk is this issue of the manual. The next manual is called Getting the Drop on Communists. This one is located in the National Guard Training Yard. This place is southeast of the Malden Township and northeast of the Bunker Hill Memorial. The two central buildings are connected, and once you find your way into the second, the manual is found in the mess hall on a table next to a cooler. The next Covert Ops manual is called Look Better in Black. This one is obtained from Revere's Satellite Array. This is just east of the National Guard training yard where we were previously, and on the five satellite platforms, the one in the center is missing a dish, with a small shack built around it. Look Better in Black is found in the shack. The Federal Ration Stockpile is where we will find the next manual, Face Paint Fundamentals. The Federal Ration Stockpile has two entrances, the stockpile itself and the Lonely Chapel. Both of these locations are just south of the Sunshine Tidings Co-op. You can find your way in from either direction, and what you are looking for is an underground utility passage with the leader of the area and some living quarters. 
In here on a small table by a lantern will be the face paint fundamentals. Squeaky floorboard Sudden Death is found in Fort Hagen. This area is not fully accessible until you've started the main quest, Reunions. After you have, however, you can go down to the command center, and towards the last area will be a series of rooms. The manual is in one of the ones that resembles a small apartment room, and is sitting on the nightstand that has a clock on it next to a bed. The seventh manual, called Bushes, Boxes, and Beehives, is located in Libertalia, a massive cluster of wrecked ships turned Raider Fortress on the eastern shore. Make your way over and up to the largest wrecked ship until you find a small outpost with a chair and a table, and the manual lies on the table. Who Goes There is the next manual, and can be found in Fort Strong. The fort itself is southeast of the Boston Airport, and while a section of it is quest-locked, it is not required to get this covert operations manual. Once you find your way inside, there is an office off to the right, and atop the desk in this office is Who Goes There. The ninth manual to collect is not the soldiers you are looking for, found in the Federal Surveillance Center K-21B underneath the abandoned shack in the Glowing Sea. The shack itself is nothing special, but once you enter the hatch in the floor, it proves that appearances can be deceiving. On the lowest floor of this surveillance center, next to the mainframe on some of the equipment, is where you will find this manual, but not the soldiers you're looking for. The tenth and final Covert Ops manual is located on the USS Constitution, titled Urban Camouflage. Help out the crew here and you will gain access to the captain's cabin, after which you can go below deck, enter the captain's cabin, and on an end table, you will find this, the final manual in the collection. After collecting all of these, even if your sneak perk is low, stick to the shadows and the enemies will likely have a tough time finding you still. First is called Kamikaze vs. Manta Man, and this is found in the Westing Estate. This flooded estate is southwest of Diamond City. Find it and locate the shack closest to the river that is still above water. Kamikaze vs. Manta Man is next to the mattress and lantern. The second of this collection is called Decapitalists, and is found in the Shaw High School Library in the West Roxbury Township. Get into Shaw High School and find the key to the library, or lockpick your way in, and in one of the two rooms in here, the magazine is sitting on a table along with some Mentats and pre-war books. The war propaganda is strong with these. Next is called Trapped in the Dimension of the Pterodactyls. This is in Suffolk County Charter School. This school is south-southeast of West Roxbury, and west of Quincy. When you make it inside into the upper floor, like the Shaw High School, you might find a library. Not far from the book return terminal in here sits this magazine on a desk. Fourth is called Visit the Uxron Galaxy. This one is in Hubris Comics. This comic shop is just southwest of the Boston Common and Swan's Pond. As soon as you step in, on the countertop within a few feet of you, this comic book sits waiting to be picked up. Being this is Hubris Comics, there are quite a few other things to collect in here, so keep an eye out. The fifth and last in this comic book series is Who Can Stop the Unstoppable Grognarok. This last issue is found in the DB Technical High School, southeast of Hubris Comics where we were previously. While DB Tech may be a little difficult to navigate, make your way to the basement level where you can find a raider leader named Bosco, who is wearing a mascot head as a helmet. Not far from his throne, this comic book waits for you on a nearby table. And if you're here to collect things, the mascot head is one of a kind, as is the varsity uniform if you can find it. For the first one, the Far Harbor Sightseer's Guide, you needn't travel far. It is inside the last plank, the tavern of Far Harbor, at the corner table towards the front. As this is the first in the set, gathering up this magazine will reveal several points of interest in the Far Harbor Island. If there was a question of what to explore first, this is a great starting point. Second is the Children of Adam Exposé. This one is found in Acadia, the observatory turned hideout of the synths, south of the Far Harbor settlement. Inside the observatory, on the second floor of the dome, this one sits on a shop counter next to some candles. And after collecting, you get an incredibly useful bonus of taking 10% less damage from radiation-based attacks. Third, called the Recipe Roundup, is found at the National Park Visitors Center, which you can be sent to by Mitch, the bartender of Far Harbor, to check on his crazy uncle. Whether you check on him or not, this one is also found on the counter, in the main room of the Visitor Center. Picking up this one gives you several sludge-based chemistry recipes, all of which having rather potent effects. 
The fourth magazine volume is called Pincer Dodge. This one is found within the Northwood Ridge Quarry, and despite its name, the quarry is actually on the southwestern part of the island. Enter the metal door within the quarry to a little underground trapper establishment. This magazine is found on a small table in the topmost shack, and after it is acquired, you will take 5% less damage from Myolurk melee attacks. The fifth and final Islander's Almanac is called Precision Hunting. It is found at the very top of the Brookshead Lighthouse, just southwest of the quarry mentioned before. As mentioned, take the steps all the way up to the top of the lighthouse, and this magazine will be sitting on a small table. Pocketing this one increases the hit chance in VATS by 5% against animals during combat. And there's plenty of animals on the island, that is, if the trappers haven't gotten to them first. The first is called The Terrible Truce and is found in the galactic zone of the park. Underneath and around back of Starport Nuka, accessed by a gate, there's a small area with a bunch of dead settlers, and this magazine sits on a wood crate right next to the derelict van. When collected, this grants an increased chance of success when it comes to charisma checks in dialogue. Helpful if you'd rather use words than force to claim settlements for your raider gangs. Next is called Fear the Knife King and it is found in the Nuka World Junkyard, a nice dusty trudge to the west of Nuka Town, USA. There's plenty of dumpster diving to be had for sure, but what you're looking for is the second floor of the warehouse here and it will be sitting on the desk right next to the safe. If you like those knife fights with your fellow raiders, this issue of Scav is a must have because it will raise your damage permanently by 25% with both switchblades and combat knives. Included with that is the new Disciples knives as well. It may be safe to assume that if it's a knife, its damage will be increased. Scav issue number three is called The Mutant Fists of Steffi Knuckles. This one is found in the nauseating funhouse of the Kitty Kingdom. Once you get to the room with the green hypno tubes, if you go straight ahead from the spinning bottles and take a right and then a left, at the end of the tunnel will be a dead raider and the magazine. On the other side of the same coin as issue number two, this one increases unarmed and hand-to-hand -hand weapon damage by 10%. Even if not being raised by 25 like the last one, punchy overbosses will still find some use from it. Volume 4 of Scav is called the Nuka Brahmin Stampede. This is found in the attic of the Grand Chester Mystery Mansion. Is it mysterious or just haunted? Anyway, once you get up to the top floor and resolve some of the mystery, you will have access to the attic. On a stack of crates near the entrance is the magazine. Nuka Brahmin Stampede adds more damage to your explosives by 5%, which will be 20% if you get the explosives bobblehead as well. Fifth and last is called That No Caps Rage. This one is found in the employees area of Dry Rock Gulch, which is easier to get into once power has been restored to Nuka World. However, there is a large bottle decoration that has been knocked over into the rest of Dry Rock Gulch that you can climb into this area. Either way, once in the employee area, there is a couple of ramps up to the roof to the central building. It is on said roof that you will find That No Cap Rage. The effect of That No Caps Rage is increasing bonuses to your strength and endurance the less caps you have. Under 10,000 caps you will gain a bonus of 1 to strength and endurance, plus 2 when you're under 1,000, and plus 3 strength and endurance when you're under 100. It's a surprising reward for being broke. If you found this mega guide useful, entertaining, or a little bit of both, please do whatever you see fit to show that. If you wish to support this channel's operation like Wasteland Legends Fen and the amazing people in the on-screen credits, you can do so by heading over to the Patreon and pledging as little as a buck. I'd like to thank you personally so much for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander the wasteland like you own it.